Hello, and welcome to the Biodiesel Magazine podcast. I am your host, Anna Simmet, and today I'm here with Frank Mycroft, CEO and founder of Booster. Frank, welcome to the podcast, and thanks so much for joining us. Anna, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today, um, Frank, I think let's begin with um, having you tell us a little bit about yourself. I read your bio. It says that you're obsessed with fueling the energy transition and helping the mobility sector win. I love that. And then um, tell us more about Booster, its background, and what you guys do. Absolutely. So I grew up uh, the son of scientists as an engineer who wanted to be an astronaut. So always had my head in the clouds and uh, got to work at NASA, got to work building some spacecraft that are orbiting the moon right now. And then wow. one simple day, uh, I had the idea for Booster. It was the day that would change my life forever. I remember my, my wife was expecting our first baby girl. And she pulled me aside one day and said, Frank, I just never want to go to a gas station again. They're dirty. They're not safe. Uh, can you just do that for me? Can you be our chief fueling officer for the family? <laughs> and so I said, OK. And then I realized after a while, nobody likes doing this. I wonder if there's a way that we can help our communities and particularly fleets uh, solve this problem in a safer, more sustainable, more cost-effective way. And that idea really became Booster over the next seven years. That's so interesting because uh, I would love it if someone could come to me in Minnesota when it's like 20 below out and fill my car up. So I didn't have to stand outside in the cold at the gas station. <laughs> um, so what about, tell us a little bit more though about Booster, Frank. Can you elaborate yeah. on... Yeah, it's funny. We've we've actually done cold testing recently in Minnesota because uh, we know this is a pain point, particularly when it's not uh, not fun outside. Mm -hmm. So, what really makes Booster unique is we realize that there's been a industry for quite a long time that delivers conventional diesel fuels to large vehicles. But we took a different approach and we said, what about all of the smaller last mile vehicles like your personal car, also like delivery van fleets or ambulances or school buses uh, that are uh, typically supporting our communities locally? These vehicles have really had no other option than going to a gas station for since you know the beginning of, of uh, the combustion engine. And so... Our mission is, can we deliver directly a complex mixed set of fuels? That's everything from uh, traditional gasolines and diesels to alternatives like renewable diesel, which we'll talk about more, to alternatives in the future like electricity and hydrogen. And so by combining a lot of regulatory innovation, we were the first company ever to be allowed to deliver gasoline and uh, clean gasoline equivalents to fleet vehicles at scale, plus technology to really get this right with small, complex fleets. We're really able to take almost any fleet that would otherwise go to a gas station and allow them to start every day, ready to go with their drivers uh, effectively getting to spend more time with their customers, make more money for the small business or the large fleet, and do so in a very sustainable way. So that's really our mission is to bring mobile energy to the world and help uh, meet fleets where they are and take them where they're going. Ah, gotcha. So let's shift gears just a bit. Could you talk a little bit about what you are seeing in terms of renewable diesel as a growing trend in fueling? Yeah, this is incredibly exciting for us at Booster because there's a lot of, I'd say, misinformation about renewables generally. And the truth is they've gotten a lot better in the last handful of years and supply is coming onto the market at a rapid place, uh, pace and government incentives are enabling companies like ours to deliver these cleaner products at a greater scale than has ever been possible before, at a, at a really uh, parity price even in some locations to conventional fuels. The interesting challenge that we see is, again, for these last mile fleets, access, distribution of these uh, great products is the challenge. Uh, these products are 
uh, not in uh, nearly any gas stations, and there's a public education challenge. So we see an incredible opportunity to deliver direct, uh, really convert fleets overnight from conventional fuels to renewables. And the last thing I'd say here is that the really fantastic thing about renewable diesel is it's a drop in fuel. It's fully fungible with traditional fuels. It can mix. You don't have to do anything to the engine for it to work. It's actually cleaner from an emissions perspective. And so overnight, we can do these conversions uh, in many cases, not having to cost or um, challenge a fleet with infrastructure or anything like that that comes with other alternative solutions. So, Frank, uh, you did talk about a little bit about it a couple of questions ago. Could you tell us more about how mobile fueling saves time, fuel, and money? Yeah, so this is a fascinating thing for me. Um, and if you're if you're like me and you're a nut about this stuff, you'll go and look at gas stations. I'm um, here in Los Angeles today, and I promise you, if you look at any gas station, you're probably going to see uh, package delivery vans, postal vehicles, pickup trucks for landscaping, and they're all having to take 20, 25 minutes out of their day to make a stop. And uh, that stop is quite expensive. You think about fleets these days, labor shortage is real. Uh, Cost of labor is very expensive. And the cost of energy is very expensive. So allowing a fleet to simply start their day, uh, we deliver the energy at night during these fleets downtime using technology that is uh, proprietary and in some cases patented to gain access and make sure that we deliver the right product to the right vehicle at the right time. And so the fleet starts the morning ready to go. Uh, And what they see is they can typically deliver, might might be 12 extra packages a route, and might be one extra lawn that's maintained, which means more money in the pockets of the fleet operator. It also means less miles traveled. It means less fuel uh, risk and fuel theft. It means uh, fewer incidents. And so many of our customers, they talk about peace of mind. It just simplifies their operation, lowers their cost, keeps their system safe, and increasingly is helping accelerate the decarbonization of uh, what they do every day. It's so cool. I love it. Um, so, Frank, you you guys, Booster has a partnership with REG, which is now Chevron. Can you tell us a little bit more about the details of that and just how it was a good how it is a good partnership. Yeah, so we're really excited about our partnership with Chevron REG. Um, here's a very innovative uh, green renewables uh, producer that is quite dedicated and in investing in bringing more supply to market. And what we saw is an opportunity to help get that supply to a set of customers that would otherwise just have no ability to access this product. Uh, I'll just give a few numbers, right? So so we converted nearly all of our California fleet customers to renewable diesel. We've been converting on average about one a week, actually, uh, fleet to, to renewables. Wow. These are customers, you can think of them like, um, think of your neighborhood landscaper or uh, grocery delivery service. These are fleets that probably would have never been able to decarbonize uh, in an easy way for for decades. This partnership gives us reliable access to incredibly high quality um, products. Uh, REG Ultra Clean Blend is the product. It's a renewable bio product that has vastly lower emissions than uh, conventional diesels. Uh, It helps keep your engine running well. And we can convert fleets overnight to this product. Um, So it's a great partnership that helps them get more supply to market and helps us decarbonize our customers in a seamless way. So we've been excited to grow with them. That makes sense. So does Booster have plans to expand into more zero emissions fuel alternatives? Yeah, we're so... We we're pretty customer obsessed at Booster, and we like to listen to the challenges that our fleet customers are having. And the interesting one is they're all looking at all available alternatives. They know the future's coming, and the future is going to be renewable fuels, electricity, hydrogen. But when the rubber meets the road, 
they end up in a swirl of extremely complex long-term challenges. Um, you know, what happens if you're leasing your property? Are you able to plan and install infrastructure for electrification? That might take years or even uh, many more than years, even if you're allowed to go do it. And then if you do do it, well, what degree to which do you electrify your infrastructure? Uh, you know, most people just think of a fleet as a number of vehicles at a location. But the reality is they have a peak season. They have a down season. They might use three times the number of assets during the holidays that they do in a down season. And so the questions around reliability and cost and flexibility really come to, to the forefront. So at Booster, we believe in flexible modular energy delivery as a complement to conventional infrastructure that helps accelerate the decarbonization of fleets. And what I mean by that is we are looking at mobile electric power in addition to mobile renewable fuels, uh, in addition to mobile uh, hydrogen. And all of these types of energy can be delivered on site the same way that we deliver conventional energy. And it can be done in a way that saves customers a tremendous amount on cost, but also, I think more importantly, gives them the flexibility they need to run their business that is inherently dynamic right? You're going to be evolving your fleet over time. You want a partner uh, like Booster and what we aspire to be, who can come and meet you where you're at, provide all of the energy types that your fleet's looking for, give you an ESG type of report and scoring on your carbon intensity, and then take you from there wherever you're going to go with your fleet. And so that's really our goal. And um, you know, we've been participating in events like the zero emission truck day that we had, I think, just yesterday in Long Beach, uh, you know, joining a lot of the names in zero energy, uh, carbon energy, uh, to really bring this future to bear. Mm -hmm. That was my next question. Tell us more about um, Zero Emissions Truck Day. Yeah, so we joined a lot of uh, big names in this space, like uh, Hyundai and, and Peter Belt, you know, Southern California Ederson, Volterra, to name a few, uh, Hyzon, um, all featuring uh, strategies to decarbonize and accelerate the adoption of zero emissions vehicles. And so you know, we're excited to partner with these groups to really, again, complement what people traditionally think of zero emissions infrastructure. Uh, you know, we see a lot of this chicken and egg problem, right? You think about the hydrogen adoption in California, for instance, for the last 20 years, Mm -hmm. The stations are too expensive, and so they're too far away, and so people don't adopt the vehicles, and so you can't build more stations. Mm -hmm. Well, we're now at a point with our technology where we can we can really do what DoorDash did for food or Uber did for people and connect supply and demand in a digital-first way that solves these problems and helps accelerate that adoption. So we're going to be working with a lot of these partners and playing a critical role in the distribution of a wide array of alternative energies to fleets to just help them get around all the struggles of dealing with infrastructure and that chicken and egg problem. So it's an exciting start to this journey, and uh, we're excited to see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are doing some super exciting things. Love that comparison to Uber Eats. Um, Frank, I'm at the end of my questions, but before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Just uh, thank you for the time. Uh, we're big believers in accelerating this energy transition and um, fueling the ability for fleets to get out there, be proud of what they're doing in a more green way. So thank you for the time and uh, appreciate being on with you. Absolutely. Thanks so much um, for the very informative and insightful responses. Really enjoyed this conversation. Um, and again, thanks for joining us. Um, it was great. We'll have to have you on in the future sometime next year. And give us an update. I'd love that. Thank you, Anna. You bet. And to our listeners, thanks for tuning in. Until next time.